hand? Anyone? Ow! Perhaps I should have clarified? Hmm? A helping hand? Whatever you're doing is working wonders! Now a quick little pull should do the trick! Gale of Waterdeep. Apologies. I'm usually better at this. A bit shocked, but friend, it's a relief and a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Say, but I know you, don't I? In a manner of speaking. You were on the Norseloid as well. And I can only assume you too were on the receiving end of a rather unwelcome insertion in the ocular region. The insertee we speak of, this parasite. Are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it will turn us into mind flayers? It's a process known as ceramorphosis, and let me assure you, it is to be avoided. You don't happen to be a cleric by any chance, do you? A doctor? Surgeon? Uncannily adroit with a knitting needle? You seem to know enough about our condition to realize it's beyond most clerics' skills. Most, no doubt. But I find myself hoping to be in the presence of the few. You don't happen to be one of them. As we've established, few enough can. It's not exactly a common affliction. We're most certainly going to need a healer, and soon, too. How about we lend each other a helping hand once more and look for a healer together? Most excellent. A parasite shared is a parasite halved. Or something to that effect. Oh, but before you think you're about to embark on a journey with most ill-mannered a man, thank you for pulling me out of that stone. It was an act of foresighted kindness, I assure you. For I have the feeling ample opportunities will present themselves for me to return the favor. Go to hell. Ha! <laughs> You're a good sport. Go to hell. An everyday expression. So trivial it's almost meaningless. But we've seen hell. It's real, and it isn't trivial. Devils, dragons, mind flayers. They used to be abstracts, pictures on a piece of paper. What a difference a day makes. Now we have tadpoles slithering through our heads like carnivorous feti. That's not abstract. That's the spirit. Let's be up with the lark. Find a healer before the wee one gets hungry. Go ahead, I'm listening. Let's see. I hail from Waterdeep, city of splendors. I am a wizard of considerable acclaim and scholar of exceptional accomplishment. I have a cat, a library, and a weakness for a good glass of wine. And if the mood takes me, I'm known to try my hand at poetry. There. Didn't that paint enough of a picture? Be with you in a moment. Not a trick, my friend. Magic. Be that as it may. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. Here. 
Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound and suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. All of this. It must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. Oh, my, you startled me. I, uh, it's miles away. Of course, of course. I was just practicing an incantation. I do, because it's through practice that I seek to perfect, to augment. Magic is my life. I've been in touch with the Weave for as long as I can remember. There's nothing like it. It's like music, poetry, physical beauty, all rolled into one and given expression through the senses. Is it the same for you? Fair enough. Though in the end, we're still playing the same composition. Perhaps I can show you what I mean by reaching into the Weave together. Then follow my lead. Now you. a kind word and a kind touch at the same time. It's warm and comfortable. Excellent. Now, repeat after me. Athran Mistra Ril Kantrak Eo. Ah, yes. The scent of rose water and a sense of well-being. A sliver of weave that tastes sweet on the tongue. Very good. Now, I want you to picture in your mind the concept of harmony, as true as you can. You see, or is it sense, the unmistakable presence of Mistra? the Lady of Mysteries. There's something like the anticipation of a kiss, then the pleasure of being cloaked in peace. You are safe. You are nestled in the cup of her hand. <laughs> you did it! You're channeling the weave! How does it feel? That it does. The weave connects you. The moment feels intimate. 
You realize the weave is making you one. You have but to imagine your desire, and Gale will know it. I... I didn't think... You perceive quick-fire gusts of embarrassment, trepidation, and finally, elation. Sorry, I wasn't expecting... But it is a pleasant image, to be sure. Most pleasant, in fact. Most welcome. The weave evaporates. And as it does so, you realize the night feels suddenly cold and lonesome. Oh. There it goes. How easily things slip away from us. No matter how hard they were in the obtaining. Good night. I enjoyed sharing a moment of magic with you. Beautiful night, don't you think? Nothing like a brush with destruction to make one appreciate the majesty of a celestial canvas. It's a view I would once have shared with my companion. Though definitely unaccompanied by such revelry. She preferred it when we were alone. Curled up before a crackling hearth with some ancient esoteric tome between us. Ink glinting in the firelight. <laughs> oh, not everyone is comfortable being alone with their thoughts. Though I never felt alone with a book in my hand. Or with her for company. I speak of Tara. My Tressin. Assistant. My constant companion through all the ills and tribulations my hubris has thrust upon me. She'd be most impressed by our efforts saving these tieflings. Proud, even. And I've given her little to be proud of recently. After I was afflicted with my condition. And locked myself in my tower for an entire year. It was inconsolable. Wallowing in my self-inflicted tragedy. I've given up on myself. But Tara never did. It was her encouragement. Her research that led me to my treatment. Once we knew that magically infused items were the key, she went out to find them for me. She saved my life. After so long being cared for by someone else, it feels good to have repaid the favor. Not directly to Tara, but to these poor tieflings. I'm sure she would approve. Oh, she'll love you. So long as you don't rub her belly. She hates it when anyone does that. I assure you, were you to meet Tara, you would see the comparison for the flattery it is. But perhaps that's not a point worth laboring further. Suffice it to say, I think rather a lot of you. And there aren't many on this plane who I'd give such high praise. Then let me say it more plainly. I think you're rather wonderful. And that's not a word I waste on anyone unworthy of it. You're the first person I've spent any significant time within a year or more. Spending time in your company, I realize that I may have left behind the greater part of my wit and sensitivity in my tower. I'm glad. To know you enjoy my company is... Well, it's rather wonderful, actually. I'd be loath to waste the time of someone who's become rather important to me. <laughs> Were I to recite that list, I fear we'd be here at dusk tomorrow. Many things, I assure you. Wait, are you saying... You know what? I think I've clearly had far too much wine. <laughs> then you've had nowhere near enough. I think this is a conversation best held back on, for now. With my condition as volatile as it is, I fear any undue excitement may tip it over the edge, so to speak.
A timeless space, bounded, compressed in a fold. A pocket of astral plane. So you came, in spite of all my warnings. Disappointing. Come. We will talk in private. Just the two of us. Suit yourself. But only the leader of your group is coming in. And will not allow anyone else. By all means, carry on. I'll come running if you need me. It's quite thrilling to fight off such grim creatures as this region throws at us. Especially being at your side. I, um, once read a book that explained in some detail the effect a brush with danger has on one's desire for, uh, other forms of stimulation. Have you ever read anything on that subject? I can't imagine anywhere that could turn my heart from you, cursed or otherwise. You'd always be as beautiful and as impressive. Perhaps it's just the thrill of our near undead experience talking. <laughs> Standing at your side through such darkness and disrepair. It only makes me want you more. Unfortunately, this is neither the time nor the place to indulge such feelings. So, we must be patient and push all such thoughts aside. For now. Was there anything else you wish to discuss? Good evening. I'm here on behalf of Gale of Waterdeep. He wishes to extend you an invitation for a private conversation in a more suitable locale. You are speaking to a mere projection of Gale. His appearance, his voice, and a certain measure of his personality, reconstituted in this case to play as emissary and usher. Would you care to join him? What little I could glean from the portion of his mind that is open to me, it is a matter most urgent. Gladly. Simply follow yonder path, and soon you will find him. this time of night. There's an almost reverent silence that accompanies the peak of darkness, when you'd almost believe the dawn will never break. The cradle of eternity. The timelessness of lovers. That most beautiful of fantasies. I wanted to see you while I still could. This may be my last night alive. I wanted it to be under a canopy of beauty and wonder and with company to match. I thought this place might bring me peace. I thought it might make the weight of what I must do feel a little lighter. But I'm not so sure. Thank you. But even if we do find another way, perhaps this is the right way. The end fate wishes for me. There is no point in running from the inevitable. Better to meet it on my own terms. One moment with you could sate me for a lifetime and prize the fear from my heart. I'm so very glad you came to share this with me. I know this is all unreal, but I created it for you. You must know that you're, you're very special to me. If things were different, if we were home, I'd have taken time to do things properly, to say it all better. But time is short. I'm in love with you. <laughs> I 
<laughs> That's a relief. It would be a shame to spend my final hours making an ass of myself. I wish we had more time to practice together. I want it to be perfect. To bond with you in the way the gods do. Intertwining our spirits in visions of the weave. Are you sure? I could conjure up any sight that you could dream of. And a few you could not. I could use the weave to make us feel sensations beyond reckoning. I could do more than woo you. I could wow you. How about the perfect night in Waterdeep? Yes? A small gesture towards your comfort. scene is this. You and I stand in the room that is the center of my universe. The sculptures, the paintings, the walls livened by the spines of a thousand books. The grand piano plays the Lyrian suites all by itself and as we look out beyond the arches that lead to the terrace we see the weary sun take its daily dive into the sea. favorite spot. Many times, evening turned to night and back to daybreak once more while I sat here, lost in words. Oh, allow me to live dangerously while I still can. This one here is called The Art of the Night. It details the first thousand nights of a newlywed king and queen. They turned everything they did into an art. The art of conversation, the art of taste, time honored and newly acquired. The art of the body, the exploration and acceptance of the self and the other. The art of the night itself. They say we take a page from their book. I'm many things, but Koi is not one of them. What do you say? The stars will be our bed. Come here. Why confine ourselves to the pleasures of mortal flesh? There's but one stitch in a vast tapestry. Let me show you more.
when you wake, it will be back at our camp. Back in our small, dirty, bloody patch of existence. But stay with me now. There are endless worlds out there. Countless ways to declare love. Infinite ways to express it. Too much for one night. We shall try. I wanted to talk to you about our night together. Have you ever walked to the very edge of a great precipice and shuddered at how easy it would be to step into the void? Ever since Elminster told me of Mistress' expectations of me, it felt like I've been walking along such a cliff face. The great drop to nothing that's never out of my sight. But you, you led me away from the edge. Without your words, your touch, I fear I would have sought purpose and solace in that void. You reminded me what living can feel like. Well, generosity is always a noble virtue, whether it be in the streets, with the charity box, or betwixt the sheets. Besides, given my propensity towards verbosity, surely can't be a surprise that I have a practiced tongue. I hope the end is much farther away than I had suspected. I hope that night meant as much to you as it did to me. And I hope we all have more time together. Together. Alone. I'll see that there is. Woe betide anyone who tries to stop me. There's nothing that would give me greater pleasure. Anything I can do for you, consider it most enthusiastically done. There's nothing that would give me greater pleasure. You must know, our relationship is the brightest spot in our otherwise bleak endeavor. To know you love me for the man I am and not the magic I command. None have loved me so purely before. You are everything to me. And yet our relationship is only a nascent fraction of what it will become. You give me hope. And I've not had that in some time. I'm many things to many people. But I'm never a man to throw the L word around lightly. I said exactly what I meant. I love you. You should never, never doubt that. You once again inhabit your own mind. Well, 
Welcome back to the land of the Lucid, where explanations are owed, if you don't mind. Few have an unblemished history. You must better yourself, not condemn yourself. This is surmountable, I'm sure. I'll protect you until you prevail. Let's not throw the murderous baby out with the bathwater. It's not all right, but it's what I'm willing to do for you. This is a rather high-risk romance we've embarked upon, isn't it? Brings new meaning to the term strange bedfellows. Chin up. We'll best this. Well, whatever it is. This city of stone and steel is an endless scream in nature's womb. I have felt no peace here. Your eyes, Stira. There is pain, endless and deep, but also devotion, blazing like the sun. You're in love, are you not? You are wise to admit it. When it comes to love, vulnerability is armor. Truth, a sword, and trust, a shield. I pray you wield all three, Stira. Bring the one you love to me. I will look into your hearts and see if your love is eternal or doomed eternally. Thoroughly magical. Let's have at it. Close your eyes, little ones. Be still as stone to earth. And remember to breathe. Your bond is sweeter than nature's dew. I see you, know you, but do you know one another? Gael, the learned wizard, the charming gentleman, the walking apocalypse. Listen, think. If the wizard were given the choice, what food would he be? An apt metaphor. Though I hope it won't lose me some kisses. Your bond beats in pleasure. It is an honor to behold. The heart is fraught. So let us turn to the joyous. When is Gale happiest? Bravo! That is indeed where my mind wanders to, when times are hard. Our touch has been that of sunlight. But now we must ask the deep, the difficult. We often gaze through a veil of roses, but love accepts both the petal and the thorn. Gale, what is his greatest flaw? Hearing it said out loud? Yes, I fear it is true. Fate seems determined to make a sacrifice of me. But, perhaps fate can yet be defied. A perfect score. Seems you know me better than I know myself. I press my finger to your bond and find a shield. Impenetrable. It is beautiful. 
Your love is one few have. Cherish it. Go in peace, seedlings. And know that you made one whose heart was long quiet beat with love and you. It's Tara! What's she doing all the way out here? Tara! That can't be you, can it? My, is that a ring? For us? You shouldn't have. Enjoy yourself now, Tara. Looks like you've got yourself set up quite nicely here. Tara remains as willful as ever. I'm glad you finally made her acquaintance. Given the length of my time away, I feared she might have given up on me. Oh, I should have known better. She'd never do such a thing. I wouldn't have her any other way. I'd actually been thinking about introducing the two of you anyway over a sumptuous home-cooked meal, if that sounds at all to your taste. My tower in Waterdeep boasts an excellent kitchen and a wine cellar to rival Ondor himself. Not to mention a larder stocked with my homemade Hundor sauce. More than you could possibly believe. Now that we've got something to look forward to, I think it's time we went and saved the world. Don't you? Anything you ask, I'll answer as honestly as I can. I'm an open book, requiring only your gentle hands to turn my pages. I must admit, the crown of Carsus has occupied my every thought since I learned of it. If I can seize it and use it, the possibilities for us are infinite. Words alone are not enough. Permit me to show you. Please, close your eyes a moment. Astra Navigamus. Few mortals ever glimpse what you're about to see. But don't be alarmed. I'm here with you. Now, open your eyes. The Outer Plains. This is where gods dwell. They observe us from afar. Where they make playthings of us. They will keep all of this from us. The power. The possibilities. They only want us to serve them. To pray to them. And ultimately to die for them. But what if we didn't need them? What if we wielded their power instead and helped ourselves in all the ways they refused to? I could make that happen. I could make this illusion a reality with you by my side. Then have me, but have the best possible version of me. The tadpoles, the orb, these threats to our existence, the gods could aid us if they wished, but instead they cower behind Io. So let us act ourselves. With the power of the crown, any foe would be rendered impotent. Any obstacle would be dwarfed by our might. You showed me just how much I have to live for. I love you. Tell me you feel the same way. Tell me you want what I want. Please. But think what I offer. The vastness of eternity to explore the weave at our fingertips. You would really prefer me as I am? I hope you're right. I truly do. Godly power perhaps I can live without, but you? You're everything.
and you put the stars to shame. Let's sit here another while. I want to drink you in. My love, I hope you enjoyed our voyage through the cosmos. I was hoping you might have a moment to talk about it. Neither have I. The closest thing to a deserving canvas on which to place your beauty. But I've also not forgotten why I took you there. I hope you don't think less of me. Great ambition should not come at the expense of what you already hold dear. I see that now. What divine calculus plucked each of us from the ether and thrust us together. I don't deserve you, truly. But I will do my utmost to earn the right. Was there anything else you wish to discuss? There's nothing that would give me greater pleasure. Strolling these streets together would have been quite magical in other circumstances. This is all a tad apocalyptic for my liking. I hope that wasn't our last kiss. I'd take a thousand more if I could. My people are leaving, and I must leave with them. Come, Lazel. We will free the Githyanki and dismantle the Empire. Let them be imprisoned no longer. It will be done. I will never be free while my people are still bound by Vlakid's chains. Your will is strong, Rastel. Your name will be etched in our slates. You will be called Mlagir, Liberator. Orpheus. I am ready. Julius! Juthas! Farewell, Gestil, my liberator. With the Githyanki gone, there's nothing left but the silence of the city, smoldering, waiting to be rebuilt. But it seems that Gale's mind is elsewhere. The crown. It's somewhere in the Giontha. If I salvage the stones, I can reforge it. The power of Carsus would be in my hands. But what then? What would I do with it once I have it? Sage and timely counsel, as always. And I intend to heed it. A wise man learns from his mistakes and strives not to repeat them. I shall bring the crown to Mistra. She'll cure me of my affliction. And I'll finally be free. And more 
deserving one this time around. If this adventure has taught me anything, is that there are things in this world far more valuable than power. You, for example. You're always wiser than me when it mattered most. Besides, I'm growing quite fond of this merry band of ours, and I'd quite like to see what happens to it. I'm sure Mistra will summon me soon enough, but until then, I propose we celebrate our victory the mortal way, with a drink in our hands and reckless abandon in our hearts. It's curious. After all the wonders and monstrosities we've witnessed, waking beside you seems more unreal than any of it. I've forgotten what it felt like to greet a sunrise without fear of it being my last. Soon, I'll deliver the crown to Mistra and be rid of the orb at long last. I'll be free. I do feel like a new man. I was going to speak to you about that, as a matter of fact. I've decided to drop this whole gale of water deep business. It's a bit pompous, don't you think? You're now in the company of plain old Gale Decarius, the most brilliant wizard of intentionally limited renown. At your service. Now, I believe this is the moment where I should get to my point, so to speak. I love you. More than I've ever loved anyone, mortal or immortal. And you've proven your love for me in more ways than even the greatest mathematicians would dare to count. That being said, I wondered if you might consider accompanying me back to Waterdeep as a new member of the Dakarius clan. Uh, <laughs> I suppose I am. Tara would be delighted, not to mention my mother. But I'd be just as happy without such ceremony. So long as we're together. You will? Oh, thank goodness for that. We'll need to make the arrangements, of course. The Dakarius clan is scattered far and wide, and you'll have invites of your own to send out, I'm sure. But that's all to come. The day is young, and there are thousands more days ahead of us.